Um, okay, just a few business things first. Um, today is actually the due date for festival registration, so we did all that, right? <laughs> um, and hopefully your students are like almost there, right? <laughs> I'm sweating too. Okay, so I think we're all in the same boat, or we're some people a little bit. And then we also still need a festival assistant, so if you're willing to help out in that, um, then let me or a festival person know. Um, last kind of business theme, um, Debbie Ellsworth is retiring, so she's brought um, some of her music that she still has left over. And whatever doesn't get taken home to a new like studio, she's just going to DI. So feel free to take whatever you think you can need, or if you know somebody that you think can use it, you, know, you can take it for them as well. Okay. Um, and then also, too, if you didn't already, there is a Oh, okay, yes, student recital. So if you are interested in having your student play um, for student recital, which is Monday, October 30th, so a good chance for them to like actually run through festival pieces before actually having to play for festival. So um, I'll just leave it on the table over there, okay? And then I'll turn it over to Jessica so she can introduce our fabulous guest today. So, fun and, and interesting. Um, this is Dr. Gabriella Voterer, and um, she is for the doctorate in group performance. She went to Manhattan School of Music and um, the <coughs> State Bowling Green University and then also uh, University, uh, you know, <laughs> University of Missouri, Kansas City for the doctorate. She also has a um, master's in musicology as well and she's also certified as a FET, which is short for Integrative Processing, Integrative Processing Technique, which is kind of like <coughs> around mental health and emotional health and things like that. So she's sort of that as well. And so I think it'll be really fun to see how those things connect today. And over to you. Thank you so much. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here today. This is a topic that I feel so passionately about. So I'm grateful for any opportunity to share my great loves, which is music and mental health. So just kind of a, a disclaimer or an explanation, clarification. I'm kind of coming from this perspective of being a performer um, and also working in the mental health arena. So I got into this integrated processing technique modality, which is a modality of emotional release. If you're familiar with EMDR, it, has, it serves a similar function. It's a different modality, but it's very similar. Um, because of my own experiences with music school and how I felt about myself and my creative capacity once I was done with music school. And so I got into it in order to work with musicians. So I've worked with, with musicians um, as clients to help them work through performance anxiety, mental blocks, uh, blocked creativity, those kinds of things. And so that's kind of the perspective I'm coming from. Um, and so I would love any of your experiences, any of your thoughts. This is really an opportunity to, to think and feel and consider. Uh, so what I wanted to start out with is this, um, it's a TikTok. <laughs> so it lasts about 30 seconds, so it requires immediate attention. Um, but this is something that I saw the other day and it, I both resonated with it and it was just so <laughs> tragic at the same time. So this is what I wanted to start out with. <laughs> I think I might have an imposter syndrome. And how do you know you're good enough to have it? Our lives are very difficult. So that's kind of what I wanted to work through today. So. I think I might have an 
how do you know you're good enough to have it? Next, what I want to do is offer you a few 
um, scenar two scenarios. towards the collegiate realm of things. I think we can remain the same. And the first one especially is more collegiate oriented, but then I will offer kind of like the pre-college version, right? So there are a couple things that I'd like to look for. What are your reactions to the scenario? Do you have a gut reaction? Oh, that's stupid. Oh, why would that teacher? Do you side with one or the other? Do you feel disgust? towards one or multiple parts of this scenario. Um, what do the students' responses tell you about their mental health, their headspace? And what do the teachers' actions tell you about their mental health, their headspace? Okay, ready? First mm -hmm. scenario. Two undergraduate students have a series of bad performances. The teacher explains that their playing is technically weak and that if they don't figure out how to out, how to commit to doing something about it, they're not going to get very far and would be a right shame. The teacher also informs the students that they would rank the students as the bottom middle of the overall studio. One student proves the teacher right by developing mental blocks and getting agitated every time they have to practice. Mm -hmm. So their practicing becomes erratic. Some days not at all, and other days they're in the practice room for over 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Regardless, they barely graduate. The other student proves the teacher wrong by practicing more than they ever have they fix the technical weaknesses and have a great senior recital. Who is the healthier student? Any visceral reactions to this scenario? Any thoughts? Well, I mean, the second student, because it says that the internal versus external. Validation of like, okay, I'm going to take this intro and I'm going to fix this myself. So, I, my immediate response would be that would be the positive student. That, that I think it's possible that that is my purpose. Um, and that is what the music world overall, like it's saying that the student that has a great student that has a great recital is the one that's helping succeed. But I kind of made this a So, <laughs> let's, 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 let's break this down a little bit. So, obviously, the one student who kind of ran into mental blocks couldn't really practice, they got scared. They were afraid that what the teacher told them was true. And they decided, oh, I can never be more than a She's right. He's right. What was I thinking? And so every action then is a reaction to that statement. So they are validating that statement. She said it was true, it must be true, therefore I can't cut you to all these things. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because that is one way of this. Oh, but why would that be a healthy student? She's not a healthy student. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you for clarifying. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yes. So that's where this one's coming from. And the other who works hard, fixes it, has a great team recital. Sometimes they fix it intrinsically. And that's what we assume is that it looks like on the outside. But the thing is, both of them are trying to please the teacher. Make the teacher the idol, make the teacher the god figure, make the teacher right or wrong. And so everything they're doing is for teacher. Mm -hmm. So in the end, they are both being codependent. Neither is healthy necessarily. Sometimes, like you said, sometimes the student will, will internalize that and be like, okay, yeah, I got this. But it's more likely that they internalize and say, well, if I don't fix this, I will be that. And that's not healthy. It's like punishment averse versus, I don't believe I'm that. I think I can do something wrong. Totally different mindset. Same outcome. Does that make sense? So that's something that we have to look for. Because again, the music, the music industry says product shows worth. And the student that is struggling is not showing product, therefore has less worth. And the student that is showing good product means that they've done it. Do you see where we're running into contradictions and where we're not even addressing the real issues here? Right, and so with, with, the, with the first student, yes. then, then you would react to the teacher. Like, why did the teacher not reach out with help right. in a way that that student mm -hmm. would appreciate it? Right. And I'll turn that back to you. Why do you think the teacher didn't? 
Yeah. Well, yeah, because if the teacher's going to sit and say your technique's not good, well, why isn't the teacher working on it then? Because that's the role of the teacher. Right. right. That's what I'm saying. The teacher needs to be involved there and not just tell them what they are, but to just help them just come. So what if the teacher has tried things that have worked for them in the past? You have to figure out what's going to work for yeah. that student. That's the whole thing of teaching. Exactly. 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 <laughs> that's the whole, that's and my you need. need. So, yes. Okay. If, if your student is reacting badly, you got to figure it out. Something happened. Yes. Oh, the like teacher potentially dealing with their own imposter imposter syndrome. Yes, <laughs> they want their teachers to shine <laughs> for their best. <laughs> passing on to our students the legacy of what our teachers gave us, or the trauma. Of feeling like yes. I've never been I actually speak of I. My college experience was I was the first student, and my first teacher was kind of harsh in her. She can just. I give her grace. Her husband just passed away, and I think she was probably one of the rest of her school left. Right. But her, she was just so critical that no, no, you're doing everything wrong. I'm like, you're not doing everything wrong. <laughs> There's obviously more. <laughs> and then I switched to a master's student, and her approach was different, and it gave me the, it, it just worked better, you know? And so I think we have to, as teachers, think about how. Are approaching and having others, but there's also a part of yeah. I have some imposter feelings or insecurities, but that was as to my problem that I need to work with. So it's a two way. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Because in the end, we are all responsible for our own feelings. People can do all sorts of wiggly wobbly wiggly moves, but we still have the, the opportunity and the power to act the way in honor of ourselves. In honor who we are. Not like, I am really timeless, you know, not that kind of honor, but honor as in, I understand that I'm human. I gave myself grace for being human. I have a passion for music, and that is something that's important to me, and I want to go to. That is self honor. And that's what we need to, to nourish creativity. The problem is, you know, those skill sets aren't taught, they aren't necessarily considered. Because if you're tough and you're strong and you have the personality type of a musician, you can find a way to make it. Which is great. But it's not necessarily a healthy way. It's not a grounded way. It's not the balanced way. Well, it's the act of even those people that make it are they mentally healthy? Yes. Are they creating trauma? Yes. No. Like that second scenario, that's the huge. I do record contact, even though they're quite I, yes. Even if they are good, they don't feel good. Yes. So, so, not. so what have you been achieved? What, that's the big question. We are here as humans. We make it to music school, and even, even if we're, we're producing, and if we don't feel content, if we don't feel that, like, yes, this is connected to my passion, my feeling fulfilled. What have you actually done? That's a good question. Yes. Well, I have been there. I have been have students that um, can do the today aren't passionate about it, but their parents are leaving them to take the music classes. And so, so then they have this new issue of like, you know, I'm just going to do the same thing. I can't get it. And it's, so I've been really trying to work with what's fun. I'm enjoying this, and I even have to talk to the mom like, Maybe 30 minutes a day right now is not anything in this child because it's not a positive experience. I do say that the thing is this forced, miserable thing. Um, and so it's been interesting to watch that change where I, you know, it's like, this is your own goal. What's reasonable and what's attainable? And, and I want you to have fun while you're doing this. And I don't think that I've worked with these students that are kind of being forced into it. And, I think that's common. Do you think mm -hmm. that there's a city style? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Their parents don't care if they like it or not. They're pretty my own music on this. Mm -hmm. And I'm so like, hoping for the best. And I and I oh, will see that after I told you that I'm not super technical strict. No, I want people to love it and I'm it. And so it's a balance of helping them in school, but also being a good teacher. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to find the balance of the two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to find the balance of the two. 
it, it, I had an interesting scenario the other day. I have a boy, I think he's pretty crazy. He's been having trouble like, with structured school stuff. So I think he's thought maybe mm-hmm. on the, I don't know, but the other day, I'm trying to get him to just focus on how to focus to do something perfect like three times in a row. So just take a scale, mm-hmm. right? And, and working on that. And that third time, you're more nervous. You want to do it. So after that workout that we did, he just goes, I hate him. And I'm like, Okay, wait, 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 here. Because I can tell he loves it when he plays. Mm-hmm. I said, we're just starting to focus here. And 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 by the end of the lesson, when we started playing the songs, then he loved it. But the actual workout part frustrated him enough for him to say that. Mm-hmm. What, you know, what's the best way to to help that? To love, you know, I'm like, oh, we want to be close up. We're just trying to train the focus. That part of your brain, you train it to focus. We're good, you know, I'm trying to be positive, but. That's a really great question. What I'm hearing is, at home, his actions are attached to value judgments. So his parents, because every kid, and I'll explain that for them in just a second, but every kid assumes it's their fault. Mm-hmm. It's just how kind of big brains work. Okay. If, if from like mm-hmm. even tiny infants, believe it or not, they are aware enough, obviously aware enough to know that if mom is upset, they can feel it. And if mom's upset, they assume it's their fault. Mm-hmm. They assume, oh, mom didn't want me. Oh, I didn't mean, need Oh, mom, I'm a burden. Already from the infant. So um, that means that in, because kids always assume it's their fault, they assume that their behavior is as attached to a value judgment. I am worth this. Yes, I am deserving of love if I believe you. Mm-hmm. If I don't bother my parents. If I show up properly. If, 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 if. Mm-hmm. And so then they begin to withhold self acceptance until their parents give them permission through their baby. And that's that's something that, you know, as parents, we don't need to exist. That's just like the thing. And every person, every human on the planet has some sort of element, variation of this. It's not happy that, so we don't know that. So do we just need to keep telling our students how cool they are and how neat the brain is and this and that? They just, they just keep telling them that they're awesome. And you know, yes, but to a reality. <laughs> 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 they're not, you know, I mean, yeah, you've got, I just want to get inside of the nature thing. I yes. think that's healthy, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. But, <laughs> as long as it's not, unfortunately, yes, we do want them to know that they've achieved something. Yeah. We all want that feeling, right? <laughs> but that it, that it's where we run into complications that sometimes we can refrain is we say, they play something like, oh, that was so awesome, you're so amazing. So in their minds, if I play it perfectly, I am awesome. So if I play it imperfectly, I am no longer awesome. I lose mm-hmm. awesome status. Mm-hmm. So what instead, something that you could offer, it comes from, I think Dr. Gibbons has talked about this, the objectivist parent approach to teaching, which is, I am so excited that you use your fingers, the connection between your fingers and your brain. I am so excited that you worked through that problem and you found a way to to find a solution. I am so excited that you are developing your ability to access your creativity. See the difference? Mm -hmm. It's no longer behavior based. It's look what process you have engaged in. That's amazing. Yes. Sometimes if we just focus on this is difficult because of what it is in the piece. Yes. And that's why we're working on it, and anyone would be working on it because it's this issue. <clears throat> that is definitely a great approach. I am, I was, <laughs> I was that student, that first student. Um, and so I, my mind, I always find the next, uh, I do this thing where I take responsibility for everything. Everything is my fault. That's not my love and things that I have to work through. Um, so if my teacher were to tell me that, everybody has issues with this thought. Then my brain will go to one of two places. Well, I'm not going to be that somebody because I'm cool. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, you're right. I don't deserve to play that spot well, so I should mess up there because everyone messes up. My brain does <laughs> so there. So again, there is no way to come out of teaching without having done something wrong because the brain is so... There are so many ways to trick. 
And that's just part of life. That's part of human experience. So if we can combine multiple things, so yes, this this section um, is so what I would maybe suggest maybe this, um, is to look at the piece and say, let's play to this which spot felt most uncomfortable for you. This is the spot where when you tear your practice, you'll start with that spot and go from there. So it's the same thing with that because that makes sense? Because yes, that is a way you push. But sometimes you get people like me who will do one of those two things. So depending on where they are, how good they feel about that, it depends on how good I feel about myself. I so we don't so we don't compare it to what everybody else. You just say look at this yourself and what look and so instead of saying whatever it is. Because I like with my group class, they I just know the parts that are going to be difficult for right. me. And I, I go to that first. We're going to work on this part because this is usually where everybody has a problem. So I shouldn't say that anymore. Um, or in a group. <laughs> that, that's where it, I would say no, but that's me. Okay. Well, no, I mean, you yeah. have the experience with the teaching. The, the, the combined experience in this room is powerful. Well, I think you just say this is a challenging section. Yeah. Not like everybody troubles here, but it's like. This is more difficult, let's work on this yeah. first, but not set them up for like. So right, because with my experience, I, it's it's a whole group thing, and I'm seeing that a lot of kids, this is the spot, right. and so mm -hmm. I just point that out. But yes. Yeah, so I'll do a different approach. So yeah. Let's look at let's look together at what would be the most difficult part. Of this you could even say, uh, yes. I often tell the students when they say, "Man, this is so hard." I said, "Yeah, look how good you're getting." Yeah. We would have never attempted this before, but you are getting better, and as you get better, things are going to be harder. And as you work it out, then you get better, so that they can see there's progress, and they will be facing hard things as they get better. But they're accomplishing hard things to get to that point. Yeah. The brain has already figured this much out. Let's figure out, yeah, I love that. Yes. Is it valid to say what we should be praising is effort and showing them how their effort leads to progress and change? Yes, and how they're taking responsibility and allowing the discovery and creative process to be without judgment. Well, and it's interesting that you're talking about, you're talking about mental blocks, and I had this just happen on the too, where she, she's been really hard on the right hand side, but left hand side, but it's had perfect pretty much. Um, and then just kept saying, that's happening to that. And she kept saying that. It's really hard for me. And I said, what if we do it one measure at a time? And I lost your life. Wait, I can do this. Like it was, and it took us a few times really slow, and then we started doing that. And she did, and we did celebrate that moment. And I felt like, yes, this is awesome. And like, this is something you were telling yourself you can't do, and you just did that. So I think we don't know. Do sometimes what they're telling us. Unless they express it, some will, some won't tell you what they're offering up or what they say in the themselves. And they don't have the language necessarily to talk about how they feel. Um, that is also a skill. <laughs> to have the words to express what it feels like. So that is a whole of Oh, sorry, I'm going to Oh, I just wish she could repeat some of those positive statements she said at the first. Yeah. Like, you yes. know, praising, um, connecting your brain with your fingers, and you said a few others that I. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I, don't see that time I, said. <laughs> um, I am so excited that you were able to access your creativity in a new way. Mm -hmm. I am so excited that you engaged with this process and discovered other shapes. You basically formed it. Look what you were able to accomplish by engaging with the process discovering, creating, experimenting, tripping up. Reassessing. So, that was exactly right. Okay. Perfect. Any other? Yes. Well, I just, uh, I don't know if you want all this, but um, so the other day I had a cute little gal, and it just seems like she's not pressing as fast as she used to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it seems like she's not enjoying it. But she came and had her two festival pieces done pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to the one piece that she hasn't been practicing a lot. I can tell she doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. So when I worked with it with her, it just she just started pounding and showing frustration. Mm -hmm. And I finally just said, if you count this out correctly, we'll be done. You know, I just was, could tell she just was done. Mm -hmm. And and she did, but she just glared at me. Mm -hmm. Glared, glared. And I she left lessons with not a positive feeling. 
So I'm like, okay, how do I approach this lesson next week? How do I get her to, it sounds like I need to have her express her feelings and how she's feeling about the piano right now. Or was it just that piece? You know? Right. Or is it something in her life? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But her mom sits in on her. the lessons. So her mom's there. So her mom witnessed what happened and saw the change. And I even wrote a note to the mom. So I'm sorry what happened there. I guess, you know, I hope she's okay is what I asked. And so. So what I'm hearing there mm-hmm. is um, she feels powerless. And his kids experience this on the daily you are not allowed to, no, 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 no. Or we're not going on until strong and yes. off. No, no, no. So the kid's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But I am a person. They feel that so exquisitely. They are a person. They have feelings. They want to discover. They want to create. Yeah. So when we know them in, they find a way to express. Because they've been powerless in every other way. So the glare was a message saying, I'm yes. done here. The, the power in the sound. I can feel trapped. Okay. So what I would I would suggest the next lesson start with letting her take control. So give her an option. Would you like to A, B, C? What do you feel like today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do that a lot. Yeah. But yeah, this is one. Just, I'm just wondering how to approach yes. the return. Yes. <laughs> um, and it could be, she said, do I address it right away? You know, yes. with her mom there. Will she express, or will she just, just stay quiet? You know, that's the thing. Has she done festivals? Oh yeah. Okay. So oh yeah. She was really nervous. taking off, and then lately she's just kind of dying. And I can tell her reading isn't as well. <clears throat> she's not. I will know. She's the youngest, and so she could hear things, and so she might. Mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of suspicious her reading isn't as good as it, I thought it was. But um, maybe suggest the mom be yeah. 10 minutes late so you can have a little fight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love that. Yes, yes. And then, yeah, I think it's usually when they're kind of in time, like, some of the students at the front of the arms ready to explode. I think there's a time to ask them what's going on and figure out what's going on. I'm noticing that they're looking a little frustrated right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just opening the door. Maybe ask her what parts does she love about Taylor? What does she love? Where does she want to go with it? Because another way that kids feel powerless is when their feelings are invalidated. Mom, I want a candy. <laughs> you will ruin your appetite. But I want the sweet experience of having something else. That's what I want. No. So all of a sudden it becomes. Yeah. Not about what what the kids want, how they feel. It's does that make sense? Yeah, because like her older sister, it's the same thing. She she got to quit. Well, two of the older the one quit got and has now back. She's taking mm-hmm. for her stuff. The other she's got another sister that has is in the process. She quit. Will she come back? And then there's another. And then there's this last one. And there were five girls in this family. And they quit and came back. Several. One of them has. The oldest was just totally anyway. So this this youngest one. I think she's experiencing that and wanting to express herself, but quite probably afraid to see what happens. And if she um, has, sorry, yes. Well, I don't know. I mean, they're really good at making their kids practice, but I think there's something about yeah. being it themselves, being it their thing. Yes. And if the oldest sister, um, the oldest was very, very accomplished. If she attained, she was successful, and then the other sister quit and came back, then the younger. This, this the other one might be thinking, which direction am I supposed to go? Oh. So there's also some of that because kids do what's modeled to them. And so if, if they, you know, that kind of thing. The other thing I would say, because children don't always know how to language, how they're feeling, one more thing. Children are so good at releasing their emotions. It's really fast. Us, us crunchy adults, we've had years and years and years to convince ourselves and have experience after experience, but kids don't yet. And so they can release stuff from these. So you might even say, consider, you know, to see if this, this fits with her. Sometimes practicing can be really hard. Sometimes you're like, sometimes music feels like this. Sometimes when you're working at a hard class, it feels like this. Sometimes when you're practicing, it feels like all the joy is gone. Sometimes it feels like this. And if the kid resonates with it, they'll already be releasing. Mm-hmm. They don't need to like. Yes, I understand. Mm-hmm. In order to 
have recognized any of Well, it's funny because she was so validated before with her other pieces that were ready. There was one that I just think she hasn't practiced, you know? Yes. And then that emotion came out. I was like, whoa. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like you're doing an incredible job. Oh, I don't know. All of you, I'm so impressed. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for what you're doing for the next generation. Um, any other thoughts before we move on? Oh, good. Thank you. And so while we're about to do this, um, logging in again, um, what the pre-college version of that scenario that we talked about would be, Josie, if you don't practice, you'll never learn it. Later on in your life, you'll be sad that you didn't practice now. <laughs> Did you hear Jennifer at the last recital? She could sound like that because she practiced. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, it sounds really gross for little kids. I don't even work for college students. Okay, so next scenario. Okay, this is the same thing. So this is another scenario. A band plays an excerpt during the rehearsal. The conductor compliments them on the beautiful playing and asks them to play it again. They start up the excerpt again, except this time there are several problems. Entrances are missed, notes crack. The conductor finally stops rehearsal. This is why I don't feel like I can compliment you, because then everything goes wrong. Oh. <laughs> Where is the conductor coming from? Why would the students react like that to a compliment? What does it tell you about their mental health? Maybe they thought they thought they were, we're good enough so we don't have to give it all this time. There is some of that. We can do it. I can do it without much thought. Possibly, yes, that is it. Any other thoughts? Mm -hmm. I have something to sound that when people are kind of unconscious of what they're doing, they're relaxed, and they play better. And then when we start 